What is up my disciples, Coding Jesus here. In today's video, I wanna talk about something that's extremely important to understand if you're a retail trader, if you are an algorithmic trader, because understanding this will really allow you to speed up the degree at which you can communicate with exchanges out there and with all other platforms that support this protocol. Now guys, whoa, whoa, hold on Coding Jesus. You said the word protocol, I'm afraid. I don't know what a computer is, I don't know how to turn on a computer, ah, okay. Guys, don't fret. <laughs> the purpose of this video is for me to be able to explain this to you in a very simple and easy to understand fashion. So if you're new to this channel, it's important that I first introduce myself. Where are my manners? My name's Coding Jesus. I'm a quantitative developer, meaning I write trading algorithms, server and client side applications for the quantitative trading firm that I work at. Today's video is going to be about the simple binary encoding protocol. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video about the fixed protocol, you should definitely do that because that will give you a true appreciation for why the simple binary encoding protocol is just so powerful. All right, guys, in order to understand what the simple binary encoding protocol is, we need to understand how the fixed protocol works and why it's extremely inefficient. What's a protocol, first of all? Well, a protocol is simply a rule set, a rule set that lays out how two computers are going to communicate. Now the fixed protocol is a protocol based on keys and values. What does that mean, Coding Jesus? Well, a key is simply a grouping. It is a descriptor of, of what? Of the value. For example, if I'm speaking English to you and I say, I am hungry, the key for I would be noun, the key for am would be verb, the key for hungry would be adjective. So, I would communicate to you if I was the fixed protocol of English as noun I, verb am, adjective hungry. Now you can already see how this is a little inefficient, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, what else is inefficient about the fixed protocol? Well, the fixed protocol is a string-based protocol. Now, what's a string coding, Jesus? You're already scaring me. I'm shitting my pants here. All right, guys, a string-based protocol simply means that a string, or what is a string first? A string is a series of characters grouped up. For example, the word hello is a string. The word goodbye is a string. These are all strings. And when I say that the fixed protocol is a string-based protocol, what I mean is that computers write out the keys and the values in string form. For example, 54 equals Apple, A-A-P-L. What is 54? Well, you can probably guess that means symbol. Now, why don't I just use the word symbol equals Apple? Well, symbol is a lot longer than writing out the number 54. And as part of the protocol, as part of the rule set in FIX, everybody out there knows that 54 equals symbol or that it means symbol. Now, I don't know if 54 actually means symbol. I haven't worked with FIX in a very long time, but you get my point. You get my drift. You get what I'm trying to communicate here. Now, what's very interesting about the FIX protocol is that oftentimes these keys and these values or rather these key value pairs can be moved around in the string. For example, I can first say the symbol and then the price. 54 equals Apple, 110 equals 53, right? 53 being the price, 110 being the key for price. Or I can say 110 equals 53, uh, 54 equals Apple. I can group them any way I want because what's important is I'm sending pairs of keys and values. All right, guys. Now, why is this string-based form of communication inefficient? Well, if you understand anything about computers, you'd understand that strings take up a lot more space than bytes. Now, what's a byte? A byte is the rawest form of memory a computer can understand. A string will take a lot more space than a byte. So, for example, the string 54 takes up two bytes of space, but I can communicate the number 54 in one byte of raw memory. We'll take a look at what I mean by that in a second. But what I want you guys to understand is not only are we sending keys and values, which is inefficient, it's like telling you noun I, verb M, adjective hungry, what we're also doing is we're adding more load to the computer because what the computer needs to do is it needs to write it out as a string, convert it into bytes, send those bytes across the wire to the other computer out there, that other computer needs to take the bytes in, convert the bytes back to a string, and then parse or read the string. 
By read it, I mean, okay, let's start with the first couple of letters. 54 equals Apple. Okay, this guy's talking about Apple. What's next? You know, 110 equals 53. All right, he says the price is 53. All right, 78 equals buy. Okay, he wants to buy at price 53, right? These, this is the load that is placed on the computer by needing to do these string to byte conversions all the time. Not only are we more expressive in what we're saying, we're sending over a lot of useless information, like repeatedly communicating, you know, noun I, right? Always giving them the grouping. Not only am I sending a string, which is much longer and takes up much more space than bytes, but I'm also required to do this conversion back and forth now between, you know, bytes and string, bytes and string, right? And that takes a lot of time and it's very expensive in the words of, you know, quantitative developers. It's an expensive operation. So now that you understand the inefficiencies of the fixed protocol, you can better understand the efficiencies of the simple binary encoding protocol. Now, how does a simple binary encoding protocol work? Let me give you a couple of high level points about how it works before we actually look at the more fine grain points on the computer. The first point is that in the simple binary encoding protocol, only values are sent. For example, I'm not going to tell you noun I, verb I am, adjective hungry. I'm going to tell you I'm hungry. And you're going to understand it because you are going to understand that there's only one way for me to tell you that I'm hungry. Right? In fixed protocol, you can rearrange the keys and the values whatever way you want. You can say symbol first and then price and then you know the side that you're buying on. Or you can say the side you're buying on, then the price, and then the symbol. But in the simple binary encoding protocol, in order to get rid of those keys, those groupings, you need to have a uniform structure for how the values are communicated. Now, another great part about the simple binary encoding protocol is that it doesn't involve any string parsing at all. It is using bytes entirely, which is the simplest and rawest form of memory, meaning the easiest thing for computers to actually handle. Now, another great part of the simple binary encoding protocol is that the header contains all the information that you need to understand about the message. What do I mean by that? Well, what's a header? A header is the first part of a message. In computing, you have something called a frame that contains a header and a payload. The payload is the actual message you're communicating, the values, the I am hungry. But a computer needs to understand that you are sending these values, I am hungry, for a given message type. For example, when I send symbol Apple side by price 53, I'm submitting a new order message. I'm communicating that I would like to buy Apple at $53 a share. A computer, when it receives those raw bytes, it needs to understand what's the message type that you're communicating to me. I understand you're hungry, but what's the context here? And that context is communicated in the header. The header contains four pieces of information in simple binary encoding that allows you to be as expressive as possible while using the least amount of space. Those pieces of information include, one, the message length. How long is the message that you're communicating to me? Two, it involves the template ID. In other words, what is the message you want to communicate to me? For example, an established message, I believe is 503. That's the ID. A new order single message or a new order message has an ID of 514. So before I even read the payload, before you even tell me I'm hungry, before you even tell me the content of the message, I already know the context of the message. And that's going to be extremely important, and we'll see why in a second. The next field is the schema ID, which isn't important. And the other field is the version ID, which we'll get to in another video. That's a lot more complex than I want to go to in this video. So what you need to understand about the simple binary encoding protocol is messages are sent in raw bytes. Those raw bytes are in a grouping called a frame. The frame contains two parts, the header and the payload. Now, guys, you're probably asking, coding Jesus, what if a computer sends a new order message and it sends it in a way that the values are all mumbo jumbled? So instead of it starting with symbol and then going to price and then going to uh, side, it sends side, then symbol, then price. That won't work. A computer won't know how to interpret that new order message. It will know it's a new order message because it read the header, but it won't actually know how to interpret those values. In order to, and, and let me tell you why, because in order to get rid of the keys, in order to get rid of the groupings that the fixed protocol had, you need to have another way to solidify a structure of a message, to solidify the first this, then that, then that. And that is done in an XML file. <laughs> Now, hold up, hold up. Oh my God, I'm, it's so complicated. What the hell is an XML file? We'll take a look at that in a second. What you need to understand when I say an XML file or the structures contained in an XML file is that a given exchange like the CME will disseminate 
a file that contains the structure of each message. And it says, the first thing that needs to happen in a new order message is you need to tell me the symbol, then the price, and then the side, and then all these other fields, all right? And every single quantitative trading firm out there structures their message the way that the CME expects them to be. So that's like me and you, before we're gonna say we wanted to speak you know, a language, we already create the grammatical structure of that language. So we say nouns exist. And uh, when you want to tell me you're hungry, the first thing you need to tell me is uh, the noun, whether it's you are hungry or I am hungry or they are hungry or you know whatever noun or pronoun people use nowadays. All right, so there's a structure that allows people when they communicate with simple binary encoding to get rid of the keys. Now, I've been talking a lot here in front of the computer, so let's actually take a look at that structure to put this all together to make sure that you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Alrighty guys, now we're in front of the computer. Let's take a look at the actual XML file. Whoa, what the hell is this? Okay, <laughs> don't worry. I'm gonna explain what all this means in just a second. Let's get into it. Alright guys, in front of us we have the XML file. Let's take a look at the very, very top. Now remember when I told you that there's a header to every single simple binary encoding frame or every single simple binary encoding message? And that header contains amongst four things, two of them being the schema ID and then the template ID. As you can see right at the top here, whoops, we have the schema ID as eight and the version ID of five. So every message will contain eight and five. Now this isn't the latest schema. The latest schema is actually eight and seven, meaning we're on version seven, but it's still nonetheless going to be very valuable for us and to understand how simple binary encoding works. Let's first jump to the actual message type. So let's ignore all these things for now here. Let's go to something like new order single. All righty. As you can see here, we have new order single. What the hell is new order single? Well, if I want to send a new order message, that new order message will be called new order single. Now remember guys, I already told you that the header contains four things. I already showed you where two of them come from. The first one is message length and the second one is the message ID. As you can see here, the message ID here is 514. So if in the second field in the header, you see 514, you know that you are receiving a new order message. Now, what does a new order contain? Well, the first thing that a new order contains is the price, the price at which you would like to actually trade. Now, the type of this field, the type of this value is price null nine. What the hell is price null nine? Well, we can check. Let's go to actually see what price null nine is defined as. So price null nine is made up of two things. It's made up of a 64 bit integer, a signed integer and an exponent that is an eight bit integer. That exponent is a constant and it is always negative nine. Now, what is the mantisa? The mantisa, like I said, is a 64 bit integer and it is the mantisa component of this price. All right. I'll put up some examples right here as to how you can go from a price, not, price nine null type to an actual price that's human readable. All right, let's go back to our new order single. So the first thing that we always have to have in our new order single message, when we want to submit a new order, the very first field has to be price. Now, as you can see, it says offset zero. That means that the first byte has to be a price. All right, the next field that we need to include is the order quantity. And as you can see, there's the description. The order quantity is the number of shares of co or contracts ordered. Now, the order quantity is of type integer, right? The price was of type price null nine, which we just took a look at what that actually is. But the order quantity is an integer. And, and what type of integer? Well, it's an unsigned 32-bit integer. Now it starts at offset eight. That means it starts at the eighth byte of the message. So the first byte was our price. We know that a price is a eight byte field, meaning the next thing that we're going to need to actually place in this message will be a order quantity, which is a 32 bit field or a four byte field. Now, what does that mean? If you're already catching on, if we're starting at the eighth byte and this field is four bytes long, that means that the next field is going to start at the 12th byte. So let's take a look here. The next thing we need to include is the security ID as defined by the CME. So we have to include the security ID. It is an integer and how big is it? It is a 32 bit signed integer and hey, let's take a look. 
It starts at the 12th byte. So by having this structure predefined for all quantitative trading firms out there, we are able to get rid of something that's very expensive to send, that being continuously sending the keys in the actual fixed protocol. Now we can continuously take a look at every given field that will be included in this new order single message, its description, its size, and its type. But I really wanted you guys to understand how this structure is actually enforced, why this is more efficient, and how quantitative trading firms are able to cut down on the amount of information that they send by utilizing this simple binary encoding protocol. Now this protocol will allow you to increase the speed of your trading, like I said, hundreds, maybe even thousands of times, uh, in, in order of magnitude of thousands of times, because it's just so efficient in the way you're sending information, the amount of information you're sending, and how expressive you are in sending that information. I'm gonna do a part two to this video because I think it's important to actually take a look at how this information looks like when you're reading bytes that are sent over the wire, information that's being sent from one exchange to a quantitative trading firm or from a quantitative trading firm to the exchange. So make sure to stay tuned to part two. But part one, this video is primarily about understanding what simple binary encoding is, the structure of it, and why it's more efficient than the fixed protocol. So guys, if you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It was a long video, but guys, I do this for free and I make sure that you are understanding the way that the world of quantitative trading is developing. Make sure to, like I said, subscribe, like. If you wanna join my Discord, Discord link in the description box below. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, send me an email at decodingjesus at codingjesus.com. I have one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with people from all around the world. And become a patron. I mean, I'm doing this for free. Patrons are the lifeblood of this community. So if you would like to support this channel and get access to a bunch of really sick perks, make sure to become a patron on Patreon. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Cheers.